Hi, this is Phil Shapiro. I'm interested in novel ways of cooling cities. And I've been engaged in some thought experiment about the city of Chicago, which has an infinite amount of cold in the winter. And there happens to be a lake right there, Lake Michigan, that has almost an infinite amount of fresh water that can be frozen. So I have a YouTube video called Cooling Chicago Using Saved Winter Ice. I sent that YouTube video, which I created using LibreOffice Impress on my Linux laptop. I sent that video over to some folks in Australia who have this uh, app called JigSpace, which lets people create 3D visualizations and animations of their thoughts. So um, these folks over there who are very smart and very creative, they created this representation of what I was thinking about in that YouTube video. So let's take a look over here. This is a theoretical ice farm. I'm reading the text at the bottom. In cities that have cold winters and hot summers, like Chicago, ice could be stored during the winter months to use as air conditioning aids in the summer. So you can actually air condition the outdoor air or potentially pump the cool water into buildings in the downtown. So isn't this neat here? This is a 3D made with jig space and there's different labels for different sections here. There's ice blocks. This is uh, dirt. Over here we got some windmills, wind turbines, and these are ice blocks. Let's see, here's a little railway and a crane, a train and a crane, railway. What do we have over here? Land, dump truck, okay. And so, isn't this interesting? They've done a beautiful job here of representing what I was thinking. And if we go to the next screen, they have 17 screens here. Let's go to the next screen, click here. Um, over here they're animating. Here's the wind turbine that's pumping water up uh, to be cooled into huge blocks and then, and then assembled using this crane and train. So water would be pumped from a nearby resource. For example, Chicago would use Lake Michigan. Wind turbines could be utilized as a clean method, a green method of providing power for this. Let's go to the third screen. Uh, so over here we see the water is, uh, these are called the freezing tanks over here. These are, these are um, tanks where almost like a huge ice cube, uh, uh, a huge uh, ice tray that we might see in a refrigerator. This would be a, like a gigantic ice tray. That's interesting. We can take a peek. Uh, freezing tanks is the trains, water. Okay, let's go to the third screen. So the crane, oh, there's also some solar panels. So solar panels could be used here to cover up some of this stuff. That's quite interesting. Um, here's this, there's a crane and a railway track. And now uh, the ice farm could actually be several acres in size. It doesn't have to be as small as this little representation. So you can see over here the the crane is animating. This could be done in a number of ways. Smallest scale productions could use a forklift. In a large scale production, a rail bound crane could operate to remove the heavy ice blocks. And this might all be done robotically. Um, there could be a lot of automation here. Oh, and you can see here that the crane is lifting up the ice block and moving it. Uh, the ice blocks, would be, ice blocks would be stored in large quantities and kept frozen until they are needed in the summer months. These giant ice trays would be stackable, much like shipping containers, to use the space efficiently. Well, that's an interesting analogy. Using sustainable energy, the giant ice cube trays would be efficient at storing the cold ice in, until the summer months. Okay. Let's take a peek. Interesting, interesting. Here's a bulldozer here. The bulldozer would maybe uh, move the earth on top of the ice. Earth is a very good heat insulator. Yeah, so there we go. To keep the trays cool, they could be either covered in soil or even buried and stored underground. During the summer months, the cold ice water would be pumped into the city to assist air conditioning units 
or I'm also thinking that there might be um, the air conditioning of the outside air, not to get the city down to what we consider air conditioning indoors at 70 degrees, but to get the city down from 105 down to 90, so that there are not as many deaths from heat. Air conditioning systems, especially in commercial buildings, are the biggest contributors to peak electrical loads seen on hot summer days in various climates. So there it is. Uh, oops, let's go back. By using the free cold water and snow in the winter months and sustaining it with renewable energy, we could effectively reduce the electrical loads caused by current air conditioning units. So it's much more energy efficient to store winter ice than it is to air condition an entire city. The amount of, the amount of energy used to create this ice and store it is much, much less. It might even be fun to like build an ice mountain, maybe a thousand feet or 500 feet or a thousand feet tall, where youth could climb up the ice mountain in the hottest summer months. And so that would also promote exercise and get youth out of the city and adults out of the city um, to a, a, you know 20 or 50 miles away from the city where they have like an ice farm. On top of this, the water can, that is pumped to the city buildings for air conditioning can be pumped back into the water sources they came from. So that's interesting, it goes right back into Lake Michigan. This is both a cost-effective and environmentally friendly way of keeping ourselves cool. So um, that's, this is just my little thought experiment. I was curious to find out which of the Great Lakes is the coldest and I did a search on the web. I found out Lake Superior is the coldest of the lakes. It's very deep. And um, currently here in July, 2022, the temperature of Lake Superior is 44 degrees Fahrenheit, which is rather chilly. And there's a lot of water in the lake. So, but there are not that many huge cities right beside Lake Superior. But maybe, maybe, maybe all that coldness in the lake, uh, there might be a way of harnessing that coldness to generate electricity because if you have solar panels on top, if, if you have a, a heat differential, a sufficient heat differential, then you can generate electricity, which could be uh, transported either as electricity or perhaps as, as hydrogen there. They have new ways of storing hydrogen. Anyway, this is Phil Shapiro. I hope you learned something here. I'll give you something to think about. Um, novel ways of cooling cities. We should be having more conversations on this topic because um, there could be very large energy savings and the energy savings could also save lives.